So I'll just show you everything that I have collected so far in my stash. Um, there's this bottle cap. It's uh, almond milk. My daughter likes to drink that. So this is just an almond milk bottle cap. Then I have bubble wrap. Every time we get a package, I save all my packaging material. I have a comb. Again, these are things, you know, you'll, you'll go around your house and you'll see things in your kitchen and your bathroom and discards uh, instead of throwing them in the recycle. Just start making a bin where you collect all of this because these make for some really cool textures. This is a string. This actually comes in the Jelly Arts kit and you can use this to make some amazing patterns. I was showing earlier some cards that I had made. Um, this is with this string. So this is a ghost print and uh, I had made several, I had done several pulls with that. So this is with acrylic ink. This pull that I did was with color flash um, acrylics. Then there's another one that I did with alcohol inks and just with this one string, you can get such varying effects with your pulls. Um, so we have this string and then I also have rubber bands. So these are kind of little big rubber bands and I just wrap them around a toilet paper roll. And just, uh, I'll show you, I'll, I'll use this as a demo also. Then this is one of those, we try not to use plastic anymore in our house, but this is from a couple of months ago when we had the spoon fork. And I just love pressing this in. Just be aware that if you have anything sharp, you're not digging into your gel plate because it will damage it. So treat the gel plate like you would your skin, but you can always press in and I will demo with this as well. Now there are a lot of other things uh, like this empty when the cello tape dispenser, it, uh, the tape is gone, I save this and I use this as a printing tool. There are so many other things around the house, like the cheese grater, for example. Now I can't put the cheese grater on my gel plate, but I do have these fun foam blocks that I can get impressions on from our vent, so our heat vent, our crates and boxes, perler beads that my daughter plays with. Like this is a design that she made with her perler beads. She fused it, made it into a tulip. I got the impression on this. And this is the kind of advanced pattern making that I teach in my online course. And uh, I believe somebody from Jelly Arts is in the comments and they can send you a link to my courses that are running right now. They're self-paced, they're five-day camps, and uh, they're very economically priced because I do want this to be accessible, this form of art to be accessible to everyone. So um, there's my egg carton. So I think we have enough of a stash here so I can start the demo and show you how I use all of these objects in my prints. Now what I do with my gel plate, I try to use the one that is a three by five. So the cool thing about that is that when I use the three by five, I can place my pre-cut paper, which is card size paper. This is A2 size paper. So it's a five and a half by 4.25. And I place my gel plate right on top of that. This is a trick that I learned from Birgit Koopsen, who is also a jelly arts artist. And this really helps me line up, especially when I'm layering my patterns on top and my colors on top to get a print. So this print, for example, is from the rubber bands and the egg carton that I placed. You can see how distinct that is. And what I had done, I had some gold brass kind of paint on my gel plate. I rarely clean this with a baby wipe. I just kind of leave the last paint be on there and uh, just work with that because it's, it's fun to see it coming up in other prints. And then I did uh, an acrylic green, and the yellow you see here is with alcohol inks. So we'll get started here. I think I'll use the rubber band first since I just showed you that. And I will use a dark color first. So I'll use my purple. I love that these um, color flash paints that I have, color shift, I keep calling them color flash. They're so flashy. They have a bit of a metallic feel to them, and they have a very cool sheen. So when you pull the print, you'll be able to see the color change in your print. So I'm just gonna brayer that on to my gel plate, making sure I have uh, coverage at all ends and take my pre-cut sheet of paper, place that on top, align that with the bottom sheet. Now this is my base, just plain, plain old print. I am not actually doing any pattern over here, just pulling my base print. So I've got a nice, and do you see the shine on that? That is very cool. So just my base print there. And then I'm going to use, let's, sit, let's take um, the violet. And let's see how that will look. And this is, um, what I also try to encourage is use any kind of paints you have. They don't have to be, uh, they don't have to be um, 
you know, a specific brand. They don't have to be a certain price point. Any paints you have, any acrylic paints you have will work. They always do. With some, you'll get more vibrant prints in the first go. With others, you won't, but they will all work. So I'm going to layer this on now with my rubber band that is wrapped around the toilet paper, empty toilet paper roll. And I'm just going to roll that over. And it's already left a pattern on there, so I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to position my top sheet, line it up with the bottom sheet that I have there as a guide. And I'm going to pull this print. And you see the impression that left? Isn't that really cool? Now we can obviously make this, we can do another pull on top of this and make this even more complex. So we can always do that with a different color or the same color with a white or black, which are your neutral colors. I think I just want to layer on top of this just to make it a little bit more complex and show you how we can work in another pattern that can be very subtle. It doesn't have to be the in your face kind of thing. And this time I can use my comb as a tool, as a printing tool. And I'm looking at this, so when I flip this over, I, I want some more interest happening in this area over here. So I'm just going to make a pattern with the comb. That's all I want over there. And I'm going to line this up again. I, I realize that my gel plate is actually positioned crooked, so I'll correct that for the next pull. <laughs> but those are the things that happen. So I'm just massaging that on, making sure I get some good adhesion and it's not leaving any gaps. And you see that? Isn't that pretty? You got a little bit of that shine happening because of the color shift paint and there's that comb. You can still see the rubber bands. That is just, I, you can keep building layers on top of that. That's just so amazing. So let's try something else. I also like the strings. I'm gonna show you how the string would work. And since I love these metallic paints, I'm gonna use one more, do one more example with the metallic paint, but I'm going to make sure I rectify this issue here. So make sure this plate is lined up correctly. And I'm not being able to read the comments as I'm doing this. So if you have any questions uh, that you're asking specific to me, I will have a look at all the questions after the live video has ended and I will respond. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about Jelly Arts or any of the products, uh, there is a representative, I think Sarah is online right now, answering any questions related to jelly arts. So make sure that you ask your questions and someone will get back to you with answers. Okay, I'm going to use this string. I just love this string so much. This, all of this frayed thread along the sides is just so beautiful. So I'm just gonna do that much. And I, again, will take my pre-cut paper Press down on that really well. Now the key to remember with something like string when we're layering on is that it will leave a ghost print and you don't want to lose that because that is the one that gets all those fiber details. So you could do two things. You could lift this one, you could pull this print and then take off the string and then pull another print or you could do it, look at that, we've even got the comb. You see the comb pattern on there too? That's the previous print we had. That's why I don't clean my gel plate because of these nifty little surprises you get. So what I was saying was you could do two things here. You could just take these fibers off because they have left that cool ghost print there and get those on to fill in these white gaps or you could make a new print. I'm just gonna go in and get the same, see this, I'll make this closer so you can actually appreciate. There's all of that, do you see that shine? The color shift paint? There's all of that yumminess over there. I'm just going to align the gel plate, the paper back on the gel plate. And it may not be, I'm very bad at aligning. That's why I like to use that paper at the bottom as a guide. Uh, and I still don't get it right most times. I'm just so bad at aligning, but I'm actually okay with things being a little off center here and there. That's fine, it's, it's all good. So I was able to pull some of that texture, but I think the paint is drying up. So in the time that I took to lift up the gel plate and bring it closer, I think some of that dried up. So I'm going to use a light color to pull that off. And I think I'll, I'll try to use a yellow and see what happens. 
I don't want to lose that ghost print because it's just so cool looking. So just going to brayer on a very thin layer of this and I want to show you how it looks. So I'm going to use a black sheet of paper this time and see if that actually shows up a bit better in the print. And that's another thing you can do when you're layering on. You can use a different color cardstock. And actually that faded away kind of. I think you can still see the metallic shine. And the fibers are there. So I want to do this again so that we can get the ghost print uh, lifted off a bit better. And I'll do it with a dark color this time so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use this thalo green from Golden. And let's see if we're able to get a better ghost print this time. I know the first print is always, is always nice, but then it leaves all those white areas that I really like filling in with the actual fibers from the ghost print because the ghost print has all those fibers so much more apparent than your first print does, the first pull does. So I'm just going to put my string vertical this time just to mix it up a bit. It can be any which way. I mean, you don't have to have, there's no specific way of doing this. You're just layering some objects on top and seeing what happens. Now, if you were to do the, the courses, the online courses with me that I've developed, they're all five-day courses. Each one has over 90 minutes of real-time video content, and I have a private Facebook group where I answer questions. See how beautiful that is? And we do a lot of fun stuff together. And I just, I just want to, this is just crazy. Look at that. You can see all the veins, the little, it's so beautiful. So I'm going to try to capture that in the blank white spaces over here before that dries up. So just going to press down on that. A little peek through. I think I need to brayer, I need to apply more pressure. So I did a little peek and I didn't uh, seem to be transferring all of that ghost print on to the paper. So I'm just pressing down with my brayer so I can get more of an even pressure. Do you see the difference when you fill that in and you've got all of those patterns captured? And there's still some, some life in that. So I want to pull that up with an alcohol ink technique here. So I have this alcohol ink that I have diluted with 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And I just, I like to dilute it because then it's not that intense. It's just kind of a whiff of color and then I can spread it out real thin. It just has such a beautiful effect in the prints. It has a bit of splotchiness. It has a, it has a grungy look. I really like that effect. So just brayered on the alcohol ink, and as you can see, it wasn't a lot to begin with. You could also pull this print, the ghost print, with some white acrylic paint as well, and that would be just fine too. But I noticed last time when Tracy was doing her live that a lot of people had asked for uh, some more alcohol ink demos, so I thought I'd kind of give you a sneak peek of how that would look. Look at that. That's string. That's just string. And it makes for such amazing prints. It's even got like the little braid going on over there. It's amazing how much detail the gel plate captures. Okay, so we've got the string. Now I'll do the egg carton for you. So we'll take the egg carton. This is my egg carton and I just saved this bit of it. And I've been using it quite a bit for a lot of my prints. And for this one, let's do some pink. So it's a lot of fun, you know, you just find, you just start seeing things around your house in a new light. That's what I've discovered with, ever since I started doing gel plate printing, I really have started seeing all of these objects in our house. I haven't spared any of my child's Legos or her wooden blocks that have verses <laughs> etched in them or you know, things that my husband collects when he's traveling. It's just so fun. Okay, so just one layer. This is going to be a one layer pull. Just pressing down on the gel plate. I'm just making sure I get a good enough impression. You probably don't need to apply that much pressure, but I want to make sure this is a good impression here. And I'm going to use again my pre-cut sheet of paper. I make a lot of cards and I've been sending a lot of cards out since COVID-19 happened, so since the beginning of March, I've sent out about 200 of them. And I find that the gel plate 
cards are so easy to make, they are so quick, and they are so unique. They're just, look at that. So we didn't get a lot of impression over there when I pressed down. I wasn't pressing down hard enough, I guess. But this is so distinct on this side. So I want to layer over this with uh, purple. And I'll introduce another pattern on this side. So that's, again, going to be some more layering happening on this. And Tracy is going to be back live again next week. And she's actually going to show you how to play with the summer kit, the summer camp kit that's uh, on sale now for $10 that has everything that you can imagine uh, that you would need to start out with gel plate printing. So it's a really cool deal. I'll use the fork, the spoon fork this time to make a pattern on this side where I didn't get the egg carton to do its thing. Just do it in different ways. It doesn't really matter. And see what that does. Ah, see, now this is inverse. I don't think about that, do I? Let me go this way and see if that works. So the one thing to remember when you're layering on your um, gel plate is that whenever you pull an image off of the gel plate, it's going to be the reverse. So when you're trying to layer, just always keep that in mind. That's always going to be inverse. So there. There's the fork, and there's your egg carton, and that's two layers. So these are four and a quarter by five and a half sheets that I cut out. And why I do that is because then I can trim them if they're, so if this is the print size, what I do is, is I, just, I just trim it along those edges, and then I'm able to stick it on a card and then send it. So it's really easy when you have all of these cut out, pre-cut uh, out sheets beforehand. So I'm also keeping a tab on time. I think we're okay with time. So I'll do another one. And this time, let's use Q-tips and this bottle cap. So this bottle cap is from almond milk. Any bottle cap will do. And I'll show you uh, another one with circles that's a different take. So I'll do one pattern with this, and then I'll do another one that is going to kind of have a 3D effect. So for this, I'm just going to brayer on my orange. You could also do multiple colors. Let's do multiple colors in this one. You can also do multimedia. You could do a layer of um, acrylic paint, and then you could add some alcohol ink on top. Just mix it up. Play, play with it. Have fun. The sky really is the limit when it comes to anything you create with your gel plate, because it's all, all doable. <laughs> Just don't go in with any fixed ideas when you're starting out, because I find that when I go in with fixed ideas, I usually end up being disappointed. But when I am willing to play and I am open to anything that comes out of this, I'm always pleasantly surprised. And I look at it and I marvel at it and I take pride in what I just created because I don't think I'll ever be able to create that again. Okay, so we're just going to take a print out here. And this is, again, one layer. We have two colors and that almond milk bottle cap. Now, that's a bit splotchy, I would think. Lots of splotches over here. It's so hot over here, the paint just dries up. I'm in North California. It's not supposed to be like arid. It's not supposed to be as dry as it is today. But we're going to work with this. We're going to build another layer on top of that. So not to worry. We're still going to get those circles showing from under. But we're just going to have another even layer on top of it. So I'm still going in with those circles, kind of still repeating that pattern. Uh, you can interlace it. You can make it complex. You can keep it simple. However you want, it's going to be a unique print. So just pressing down on that, making sure we've got good coverage, nice massage. This always relaxes me doing this. It's just so fun. OK. So that's two layers. And you kind of see from the layer at the bottom, the orange, the kind of faint undertones of that first print. All right, now to show you the circle that will give us the 3D. So I'm trying to look for my, here it is. So the sellotape, when the tape finishes, this is what the tape is in, the dispenser bit. So I just take that out, and then I use that. But instead of doing just simple stamping with it, I slide it. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll actually show this to you with white paint on black paper so that you can really appreciate the effect. So I still have some 
green from the previous because I didn't brayer that off on the side. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to add some more white. It's going to be a greenish white, but that's okay. Maybe that'll give a really cool effect. Okay, just play over here. Just playing. So adding some more of that bright white, making sure it's a thin layer, just ensuring that I don't dry the paint out either. And then I'm just going to take this here and slide it ever so slightly. Slide it ever so slightly. And you kind of get like that 3D effect going. This one I didn't slide as much, but you see what I was going for? And then just put my paper on really fast because it's so hot and the paint is completely drying up. Massaging that really well. The paint is drying up really fast, but you can see how that is so cool. So I'm going to do another attempt at this. I'll put some yellow paint this time. I have the light yellow on hand. And um, I'm going to brayer that on. Again, a very thin layer. Make sure that I don't lose the ghost print. Whoops. Oh, look what just happened. My bubble wrap decided to come. It just flinged across. Well, I guess we're going to get that. <laughs> I love these happy accidents. That wasn't what I was going for, but let's see what that does. I love that that happened. It was stuck to my brayer as I was rubbing the paint off. <laughs> I just enjoy this is like this this might end up being one of the really cool prints. Who knows? <gasps> Look at that. We've got the bubble wrap, the accidental print that just happened, and this was the wrong side. I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally use this side of the bubble wrap. I would press down on this side. This was the wrong side, and it still has that really cool effect. That would make for a cool card. I could just like do, I can envision putting in some gold in there and then really making it shine. But it's that, you know, this is, this is kind of what happens when you're working with a gel plate. You will have accidents and everything is fine. Everything is, just roll with it. It's all good. I'm going to use some more alcohol ink here, and this time I'll use my Q-tips. It's all, um, all in good fun. That's, I have realized that with the gel plate, the one thing that has happened is I've really stopped stressing about what I'm making. I just enjoy the process, and that is so important. It's art therapy. It's free art therapy. And then I get to share it with others, and I can see, like, I'm seeing all my students work right now on the private Facebook group, and I am amazed. There's a three-year-old who's making some amazing things, and there are others who are 60-plus that are using gel plates in a way that I hadn't thought of. So that kind of pulled the acrylic paint from under. The alcohol ink pulled that, but that's the alcohol ink clear that I was going for, and then I'm going to build another print on that with Q-tips this time. So I'm going to use, and I might actually mask that off with some bubble wrap too. So we'll see. Use a darker color, and I'll use my color flash, color shift I mean. I always call it color flash because of the flash. It just shines in the light and it looks so pretty. So just rolling that over, making sure it's a thin layer. Anytime you're layering, um, having thin layers is a good idea because then the other layers at the bottom peek through, which is nice. So just going to make some dots here where I want the yellow to show. The rest of it is going to be covered by this beautiful purple. I think I did double dotting over there. Um, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to use some bubble wrap the way I intended to use it. Just going to do like half of that. Just press it down, lift it up, and let's see what that does for us. Sometimes it's hard when you are making your patterns on the gel plate to quite understand what it's going to look like when you pull the print, and that's kind of where practice comes in handy. The more you do this, the more you know what the resultant print is going to look like. So if you are going online right now to buy your gel plates, remember to use the code MONCB to get your 10% off. Look at that. So it did still pull. Oh my goodness, that is the string that I had used earlier in one of the earlier prints, the very, this one, there's still some string over there. 
that I noticed in this print. This is so cool. So it's like four layers deep. You have the bubble wrap print. You have the Q-tips. And if you do this with a black and white, I mean, just having a mono print like that would be so great. So I'll do one last print over here, and um, I'll see if I can mix up some alcohol inks for you in this print. I'll do a red and a yellow with some of these household objects and see how that looks different. Because when you use a different medium, the effect you get with your prints obviously is very, very different. It's very unique. And I find that the alcohol inks um, really are very saturated. So you don't need a lot. And I actually dilute mine and I store them in these bottles so that you know I'm not using up that much pigment anyway. I'll do this, try to do the 3D effect again. See, now the alcohol ink dried up. So I'm just going to use yellow, another alcohol ink layer on top of the, the previous one, brayer that on, and I'll put my string on top. Just that one layer, and pull that off to see. How much do I dilute the alcohol ink? Um, I usually put about 10 drops of alcohol ink in this bottle, 10 drops, and then I don't ever measure it, so I'm sorry I don't have an accurate answer, but I put about 10 drops and then I'll fill it up about this much. So I would say about, if you were using alcohol inks that come in a bottle like this, I would say if you put one quarter of, one quarter is probably too much, so 20% of this bottle, and then fill up the rest with alcohol. So it's um, two to eight, so one to four ratio, one ratio, one of the ink and four of the alcohol. And that's isopropyl alcohol, 91%. And I, I find that that seems to work just fine. Okay, this is so cool. So we've got two layers of alcohol ink there. And of course we have that beautiful ghost print over here. And I'm really hoping that you'll go to the Jelly Arts website or go to Michael's or go to Dick Blake and get yourselves these jelly plates. If you don't have these gel plates, do get them. It will change your experience this summer. And you will find it so relaxing and so therapeutic and so fun that you will shout it from the rooftops and tell your friends to start doing it too. I'm gonna to try to capture this before it dries up. We'll see. This is my last print for today. And I'm sorry that you are not being able to see my face, but I'm glad that at least the video is working now. Um, I don't know what was happening earlier, but I'm so glad that this is working. Oh my goodness, the details in this, you guys. Wow. I mean, this, the fibers in that, it's just exquisite. It's just absolutely exquisite. So play with these, things you know you have so many ideas you have rubber bands I'll, I'll show you again everything that I used we did prints with rubber bands right here and the egg carton we did prints with a comb with the rubber bands this is with the almond bottle uh, almond milk bottle cap then we had the string of course which is my favorite lots of alcohol ink poles acrylic poles uh, we did bubble wrap we did q-tips we did the cello tape we did the egg carton another one with the comb and the, the string. There's no end to what you can create with these. And when I do my card making, it's, you know, it's so simple. You don't even have to modify. Just add those onto a card base and you're done. Your cards are ready. Just write a sentiment. You don't even have to have stamps. Just, you know, I hand wrote that. I didn't have a stamp. So I just hand wrote that. So just explore with these products these household objects you have at home. You don't have to go buy expensive stamps and expensive stencils. This is all in your house. So just go through your stashes in your kitchen, in your pantry. Uh, if, you, if you want uh, to have an impression that you can't get directly on the gel plate, like uh, an actual steel fork, or I've even used a whip, then you can use foam blocks. And uh, I talk about all of that, and I show you how to make your own stamps in my course. But even if you don't take my course, you know, go to the blog, the Jelly Arts blog. There's lots of fantastic information over there. Have a look at those videos. Our artist team is full of brand new ideas, and they always come up with these cool techniques. So have a look at that. Go to the Jelly Arts website, buy the gel plates, and have a fantastic summer. Tracy will see you here next week with the summer camp kit, and I hope that you have fun.
Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your afternoon.